uh, because now we need to start there. We are going to start with the boilers. We need the boilers first. Yeah. So, is it okay? Okay, um, can we start? Okay, so good morning. Um, okay, last week, I think um, it's my friend that uh, said if we can start with uh, mechanical first, isn't it? Is that you? Oh, the other one. All right, so, but uh, let me ask you, did you go through the equations? There are many equations on boilers. You didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Shiv. Hmm? Yeah. Catching, Catching up. How? Doing other stuff. <laughs> yo. Yo, 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 yo. Okay. All right, so it's fine now. What I'm going to do is we are going to uh, solve, maybe look at the remaining problems so that when you get back home, you can revise them, right? Okay. So I'll just give you a hint again from what we did last time. Remember that we said we have um, uh, different uh, components of a boiler, okay, which we said we have evaporator, superheater, economizer, and uh, air heater. Why I need to write like this is because now 
if I have my fuel here, the air and fuel. All right. Now, after this um, evaporator or the boiler you know, has received enthalpy and then the steam goes out, the remaining, the remaining will need it to superheat. Okay, the remaining heat, to superheat that. Now, we use the remaining also to, for economizer and then air heater. So any other thing that is left from the flue gas okay, can be dissipated out to the chimney, right? Okay. And we said we need to feed this evaporator okay, from the economizer. And from here, the steam goes to the superheater. And then that goes out to the turbine to, to turn the generator. All right. And then... Um, on the air heater, we have this, uh, the air, we heat the air a little bit before we send it to this place. Okay, so that's what we had before. And then also, we said, we put uh, our temperature enthalpy diagram, All right? Okay, and we said, if, if you have your economizer, Maybe it's, it's heated, this is the water gets into this heated up and uh, with each of the P out there, let's say H2 and this one is H1. So we can even sketch the graph for that. Okay, like that, then this is superheated. And we say from here, if this is the temperature T1, which is the temperature at this point T1, now we say from here to here is our HF. Okay, and we say the energy between here and here is our HFG. And we say sometimes if even the steam can be wet, so it's, instead of having HFG, can have a fraction of wetness. Okay, so which sometimes we now write X HFG, just to show that it's, um, it's wet. But if it's not wet, we can get that at fully at this point. But if it's wet, can get a point in between, okay? And I would say this is superheated. Now, what we're going to do is we just need to solve, look at the last problem we solved before, I mean, where we stopped. Um, what is this now? Do you want to turn on? No. Yeah, so the, we solve this. Um, so, uh, Clems, can you call the can you call the guy and see if he's online? Actually, we're trying to stream. Uh, we're streaming, right? Okay, C call and Danny and see if he's he's getting it. Okay, so um, let's say we, okay, we are done. We solved number one, right? Yes. We are done with this, and then um, uh, number two. We done with number two, and then number three. Are we done with this? Not yet. No. Okay. Now the question says question number three says in a power system, uh, the power station, a uh, Steam is generated at a rate of 226000. Now, remember I said steam. So now that means that the mass of steam is 2622226000 kilogram per hour. Okay. At an absolute pressure of 5 MPa. So the pressure is 5 MPa, and then and at a temperature of 500 degrees, temperature 500 degrees centigrade. Now the temperature of uh, the feed water entering the boiler is 143.6. The temperature of the feed water entering the boiler. So in other words, if I'm here, the temperature entering this boiler 
this temperature there that is entering this evaporator, that is your boiler, is um, 143. Okay, temperature entering boiler, 143. Okay, and then um, the consumption of fuel is at the rate of 26300. Now, fuel, which is your MF, is 26, um, 26300. Okay, kilogram per hour. Okay, and then the, the CV of the fuel. So once you write down everything, then you can kind of solve it. Well, the fuel is 29100 kilojoule. And then the turbine develops. Turbine. Turbine output is 45 megawatt. Okay, so the question is to calculate the features of the boilers. The features of the boiler itself, so we want uh, the boiler efficiency. Remember we said boiler efficiency um, is the mass of the steam or the mass of the water, the rate of the mass of the water by delta H divided by uh, the mass of the mass of the flue gas, I mean, the mass of the fuel, okay, by CV. So we're going to check what is given to us. Look at this. If you, if you look very well, we have temperature entering the boiler. Where is a boiler? Remember? Hmm? Our evaporator, right? So this is not given to us. Now, um, we are going to look, use this, what is this, the, we are going to use this to get that, the enthalpy at that point, right? And then we are going to use this one to know what is happening here. We don't, I don't know whether it's superheated or not superheated, okay? So I'm going to use this, the pressure, because the, the steam is operating as a 5 MPA at a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade. We don't know whether it's superheated or not. So whether, when we go to the time uh, uh, the table, it will tell us. Okay. So let's get to our table. Let's get to our table. So our table will tell us. So what we do is you look for uh, 5 MPA. Check 5 MPA. Okay, you got it, 5 MPA, look for it. I want to see the saturation temperature at 5 MPA. I want to see whether it's, is it the same thing as 500. If it is not, it means that the steam is superheated. Did you get it? So, do you get 5 or 5? No, it's 263. So, five M, at 5 MPA, for 5 MPA, uh, TS is what? Five hundred kPa. This is five hundred kPa. So what do you have as a saturation temperature? One five one point eight. Like this, right? But can you see here? The temperature is operating is five hundred. So what do you think? It means it's superheated. Do you get it? Yes. So it means it's superheated. So now you need to, you need to now know the enthalpy of that superheat. Okay, because what we want here, we just need to get the enthalpy here, and we get the enthalpy at the entrance here, which is already given, which we can calculate from here. So, so that we know exactly what is the total enthalpy. Once we get the total and the difference enthalpy, then we'll put that we'll put that here. Okay. Did you get it? Alright, so now 
So now let's uh, let's look for. Okay, let's just calculate. Let's look for. Let's say solution. Okay, H1. The water entering here into the evaporator is entering at a temperature of 143. So that means the east enthalpy will be what? C T, right? C T, right? C T C P T. What is the C of water? It's a four point. Four point. If you don't know, you can just put four point two, right? If you don't know, if you can't get one point uh, four point one eight seven, you just put four point two, right? Times that temperature is entered at one four three. So what do you have there? Must get my own calculator to be faster. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? So we'll calculate that enthalpy. We have 4.2 times 143. You get uh, 600.6. Right. Now, H2, which is uh, in this case now the enthalpy at the end there, we have seen already that this is superheated. So you go to a superheat table, look for 5 MPa at 500, I mean, at 500 degrees. Okay, check the enthalpy. Let's go to superheat table. Superheat table. So you see that we said that this is superheated, right? And I said, okay, let's go to superheat table, look for 500 kPa at 500 degrees centigrade and check what is the enthalpy. 3702. 3702. It's okay. Agreed? It's okay. Yes. 3702. Hmm? 5, yeah, 500, not 5,000. Oh, sorry. 5, this is 5,000. 5, Who put 500 there? Do, are you checking another 500 or 5,000? It should have been 5,000. Place 5,000. KPA. Even the temperature, is it, I hope it's under 5,000, right? The TS. Huh? 263.9. Two, okay. okay, but it's still superheated, isn't it? Yes. Okay. We must go back and correct this one. That is for 500, not 5,000. Which one? H1. No, H1 is. H1 are just using the temperature here. Okay. That's 143 by 4.2. Okay. So our H2 is 3702, right? It's okay? For five thousand. So get it get get a value. Five thousand for 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 superheated. This what? Three six six six. That's a good number. Okay. Did you get it? Okay, just check what is there. Is it keep? It's KPA. So we see it's KPA. No, it's superheated. Oh, it's superheated. Yeah. The superheated is Pascal. So if it's Pascal, it means that we we are even looking for your know, five five million five mega Pascals. Yeah. Okay. Now we don't have it. We're not going to assume we can do something else. We can use another method. Which other method can we use? Remember that um, if you, I hope they didn't make a mistake on that table, right? You don't have any, any other, no, that's the only one I gave to you. Okay. Now, okay, so let's, let's look at another way of doing it. Which other way did we say we can use to do it? When you have, this is a different, this is a temperature, and that is the temperature there. 
Which other way can we use to get the H here? Okay, it will be HG plus H will be HG plus M just C P delta T. Okay. Is it, is it true? Remember that um, here to here is HG, right? To there is HG. So I, I just need to add small this, this one. And this one here is CP delta T. It's okay. Just the enthalpy for that, uh, um, for this um, superheated area. All right, so now let's go to 500, I mean 5,000 kPa, not superheated. kPa, look for the head G. Go to, do, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. You go to 5,000. 5, Remember that boilers is always there, you know. <laughs> so we don't want when, if you have a problem like that, and then uh, we got problems. Okay. So 5,000. Okay, just, just look for the head G. Uh, 1640. One, so 1640, right? Is it? It's 2795. The head G. The HG. 2795. Okay. What's the CP? For for this for for water because for steam. Yeah. So four point two into. Now we just check the difference in temperature. Five hundred minus two six three point nine. Okay. This is another way that we can use. Remember that the best way. Any any of the ways are okay. And then you go to superheat and look for this 5M and at 500 and get the, the enthalpy. Or you get the enthalpy of this from here to here plus this small one. And this small one is CP delta T. Okay, so let's see. We have 500 minus 26. 3.9 times 4.2 plus 2795. 2795 plus that, okay? 3786.62. Okay, this is it. So if, if we had made a mistake, maybe you didn't see the KPI and you use this one, maybe, maybe you, you, you'd be almost. No, they are to the, to the answer. Okay, did you get it? So this is my H2. So our H2 is 3786.62. So that's all that you can now calculate now the efficiency. Okay. So you can now get efficiency. So the boiler efficiency, end of boiler, will now be the mass of the steam, which is given to you as 22600 okay, by the delta H, which is uh, 3786.62 minus 600.6, okay, divided by, it's not correct, right? Okay, do it again. 500 minus 263.9 equals that times 4.2 equals that plus uh, 2795. 3786.62. Just check the, the battery of your calculator. <laughs> If it is not okay, you can sell the calculator and buy a new battery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now you divide by the mass of the fuel, 
which is 26300 okay, kilogram per hour. Just make sure they are the same. Just make sure that this and this are the same unit. And then by CV 29000. Okay, so, so we have that to be three. Which, which one? Two. Oh, this is 291. Is it 291? Two, two, oh, yeah. 291. Oh, oh. 291. Oh, oh. Okay. So we have um, 378. 3786.62 minus 600.6 equals this times 226.123. Divide two six three zero zero divide two nine one zero zero two nine one zero zero. Okay, so you get uh, zero point nine four. Okay, one uh, zero point nine four. Just put it like that. Okay, now that becomes nine, four, zero, eight. yeah. Okay, 94 percent. So now this is the efficiency of the boiler. Do you leave it like that, or do you write, need to write it in percentage? No, you can leave it like this, or you can put uh, 94 percent. Okay. So now the next question is to calculate the thermal efficiency of the turbine. Now I've actually sketched something there just to show you a little bit uh, how uh, this works. So uh, let me clean here. Remember that when you have a boiler, you have a boiler, so we have a boiler, and after the boiler, we have your turbine. The turbine is going to drive your generator. So you're going to get the generator, and then you have your P out. Okay, so you have your P in here power in into the boiler which is the power from the the power from the flue I mean uh, from the coal okay remember that what we have here MFCV is uh, okay if, if you multiply with divide by time then you get the power All right because this is mass this is a uh, mass flow rate and this is enthalpy so now I'm going to have, this is to be MF, CV, like that. But you just need to divide by 60 by 60. So why do you need to do that? Because now this power, this energy, right, I must divide with, with time, right? And the time should be per seconds, not, uh, per, not per hour. So all the things given to us here, the mass, the mass flow rate there is given to us in per hour, right? So you must just divide by 60 by 60 to make it in per seconds, right? So that what you get here will be in joules per seconds, not joule per hour. And joule per seconds is what? One joule per seconds is what? Right, so now, so this input input energy here so we have that as input then for the boiler the boiler is our output and if you check what we have calculated this ms delta s this one is the output of the boiler right okay so this one ms delta s is the output of the boiler but it's in joule uh, in, in, in joule per hour so you must also convert to Seconds. Okay, this is what we used to get this efficiency. We got the efficiency to be 0 0.94. Okay, when we divided this output here over this input, we got that. Okay, agreed. But the question says, from the question, they said the turbine output is 45 megawatt. Look, this this for the turbine output is 45 megawatt. 45 megawatt is uh, 45 
megajoule per second. Okay. Is it, is it true? Okay. So now, so we have that, we have this, then the next again is um, we are even given the efficiency of the generator. This generator, they said, if you have this efficiency of the generator to be 0 0.9. Now the, the now question now is to calculate the thermal efficiency and the overall efficiency of uh, the station. Okay. So here, we know we have our boiler efficiency, which we get at 0 0.94. Now, to get the thermal efficiency of the turbine here, right? So we must, we must consider this. You know, so the whole turbine from here to this point, uh, we get the efficiency of the turbine itself, which is input here, output there. Okay, if I want to get the turbine efficiency. Input into the turbine is what comes out of the steam, right? The power of the steam gets into the turbine, and then from there you get an output of 45, as is given. So since you know this, and you know that, so you can calculate the efficiency. Before you can calculate the overall efficiency of the whole plant. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's solve that one. So I'm going to click here, and then we, we solve. All right, so let's... Now remember the first question was to calculate the efficiency of the boiler, all right, which we said is MS delta H over MFCV, and we used the temperature into the boiler to calculate the enthalpy into the boiler, and then we use this one to calculate the enthalpy after the boiler. Okay, and we saw that it's superheated, right? So we apply the superheat formula, and then we'll be able to get the east enthalpy, and from there we apply that and get this. All right, so that means this is the output of the boiler, this is output into the boiler, input to the boiler, output into the boiler. So this is input, output. Now, they said the, the turbine developed 45 megawatts, which means the output of the, of the turbine is 45 megawatts, right? So, but remember, input into the turbine is this of the steam, right? So that if you want to get the efficiency, thermal efficiency, right, then we can now have uh, 45 megajoule per second divided by this, what we have here. What do we get as that MS? If we calculate all these ones, okay, I just put it there. Have 226000 zero, 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 into 3786.62 minus 600.6. Zero, zero, okay, you divide this by 60 by 60, just to make it in, uh, in joule per second. It's okay, then you divide. Right, let me get um, that three three seven eight six point six two minus six zero zero point six for that times two two six one two three I'll get something let's say divide by sixty. So you get um, four, five times eight power of six two per second over three, three, one, two, three, four point five two. Just check, did I make any mistakes somewhere? Hmm? You have not I've have not divided yet. Just check it. Let's say forty-five. Four five. I think there must be something there somewhere. Just check, uh, let me see. Is this, is this okay? We we'll have. What is okay? Just check is where. The, like, is it the, the, the 90 volts, the, the end of the, the boiler? 
This one. <laughs> the table. Yeah. So that's why it's just a table here. Yeah. You cannot get uh, 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 the answer. The, the, the answer will help you. Mm. Mm. It's just a table, but the application is, is correct. It's correct. So it's a table. Yeah. So, but this is okay, right? Yeah. This is two two. Two two six. It's a very high number. Right? Yeah, it's very high. Kilojoule per hour. Because the, the, the one for the boiler was supposed to be 80, 83%. This so one. The, the H, H2 mm. was supposed to be 3433. Three, three. Not 37. Three, yeah, but it, that, that one is on that another screen table. Yeah. Let me just get this uh, this other sim table here, so that we see the um, what cost. This is, this, this is the same thing. It's from here that I got this, right? Mm. So what do we do? I'm just trying to check. Okay, so let's, let's see. You are saying this, this one. Three, four, three, three. Only. So if it is three four three three, it's like what? Um, we'll have three four three three minus. Is this okay? Yeah, that's yes. what. That's what I'm okay. Let's let me just check. Three four three 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 four three three minus. Oh wow, that is true. Yeah. Point six. Hmm. You still get high number. Yeah, no, this this one's supposed to be high, so that. No, 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 I'm saying your answer is still high. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got two, five, three. Times two, two, six, one, two, three. All this divided by six. Zero, zero, zero. So you get. Yeah. This is um one, two, three. Check what? You know what? Let me just check something here. See if I have this team turbo there. <coughs> I okay, will get it right, just to check this. Um, Okay, we'll get about uh, two, three, four, three, five. Three, four, three, five. Three, four, three, five. Mm. Yeah, well, three, four, three, two, is not that. And we had 
45 and 77 So I think I think the problem is here also what is let's get this even if I put three let's check this is three three four three five you see three four three five minus six hundred point six right now by two two six zero 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 and then divide by sixty by sixty. Um, okay, let's see. Two, two, six. It's one, 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 seven, 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 nine, one, two. But is is, but is it um because now what, what happened? What you what you need to do is that twenty two six hundred yeah? mm. divided by three thousand six hundred. So so that then you must multiply that by the. So here you got twenty lower lower yeah, yeah. twenty two six hundred divided by that, mm -hmm. and then you put the whole bracket. Yeah, yeah, that's what we are doing. You just like subtract this from that times this over that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It so you get one comma one two. No. Yes. Three, four, three five, minus six hundred point six times two two. Six one two three divided by sixty divided by sixty you get about one seven seven nine three seven. One seven seven nine three seven. Okay. I, I, I don't think you, you you understand what I'm saying. If you write that twenty two six hundred mm. divided by sixty times sixty yeah, it will be, yeah. you put the whole bracket. Because now what you're doing is you're taking that three four three five, you're dividing that by 3,600 as well. No, I just divide it by this, I multiply by this oh, difference. Sorry, I already put the 45 in the calculator. So I said 45 divided by that, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so now, wh what is this value? That is your... Uh, in, 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 is, it, is it in Joel or in... It's a kilojoule, right? Yeah. It's okay. okay. If it's, is it kilojoule? Kilojoule per second, right? Okay, then, then it, it, if we the same thing with what we have done now, let's, let's continue with that. What is this value? <coughs> hmm? I know, I know. I'm just saying, what is, what is the value? Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it's kilojoule, right? Yes. So if the kilojoule, I'll just put um, this to be like that, joule per second. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is, that is why it is very small also. Okay. All right. So now let's, what I'm going to do is I'll just give you, let me see the, the steam table. The, the steam from the steam table. I don't know, but why is this one different? What was? Yeah, then you use that one, the one for power steam. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, but it's fine. Okay, now what, what we are going to do is, now let's, let's just, uh, let's clean up, let's start from here. Right, so let's start from here. Now, we have uh, CPT to be 4.2 by 143, which is that, right? We got that, isn't it? Now, what, what I now see that for H2, which we said, we use H2, we said is HP, so H gas plus C, P delta T, right? Right? So, and uh, we said that this is superheated, and we use our superheat steam, get LG plus DCP, and that was 4.2 into the difference in temperature, which we said is uh, 500 minus uh, the TS. So at the end of the day, we got, I'm just going to put that, that uh, uh, value, um, that value to be... That, that um, the boiler, uh, what is it now? Okay, it's total. Total 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, right? So this is 3, 4, 3, 5. Right, so now here, 3, 4, 3, 5. We have here that, okay? So I'm going to clean this. I'll put 3, 4, 3, 5. 3, 4, 3, 5, okay? I know that. All right, so is, is it okay? Okay. Okay. So let's let's get our let's get the efficiency of that first, just to make sure that we get this in order. So we have efficiency of that three four three five, three four three five minus six hundred point six times two two six one two three. Uh, equals that divided by two six three one two divided by two nine one zero zero give you eighty three point something right okay agreed can I write eighty three point six seven okay so we have zero point eight three six nine nine so which is eighty three point seven okay now, this is the efficiency of the boiler. Now, so I have here 0.83.7, okay, as the efficiency of the boiler. Now, the next thing, as I said, we now calculate the efficiency of the turbine, which we have um, input, output over input for the turbine. The turbine develops uh, 45 megajoule per second. So, which means uh, uh, thermal, which is for the turbine, okay, is 45, that's a power 6 joule per second. Now, divide by, now, remember we are looking at this as our input, and uh, which is uh, what we have here, divide by uh, 3,600. So, we have 2, 2, 6, 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 3, 5, minus 600, point 6. Okay. Now, this is, this one was in kilojoule. So if I divide by 3,600, I will get it in kilojoule per second. So anything we are going to get will be in kilojoule, right? Per second. Up here is joule per second. So let's uh, get this first. So we have 4, 5, that's a power 6. All over, so that we now get a three four three five minus six hundred point six times two two six triple zero divided three six zero zero. So we now get one seven seven nine three seven. But this is a kilojoule. Yeah. Per second, okay. So that you have, you have that to be four five times ten to the power six by one seven seven point nine times ten to the power six also because this is uh, one two three to the k. All right. So we can now divide 
45 divided by 177.9. Okay, so you get about 0 0.253, about yes. 25.3%. Yes. So here would be 25.3% or 0 0.253. Okay. Okay, now, the next question is, is to calculate the overall efficiency of the station. Okay, in other words, we have input here, we have output there. If you are asked to calculate overall efficiency, if you know the efficiency of each of the components, you can just multiply them out. Okay, you have overall, just multiply 0 0.837 by 0 0.253 by 0 0.9. So that will give the overall efficiency, okay? Or if you, don't, if you don't multiply out, you just say overall efficiency is P out or P in, which P out is, you get the output power there. How, how do you get the output power there? That's 0.9 or 45. Okay, so remember that you get output power there because we know that here, that efficiency is P out over P in. So if I take this times that, I'll get uh, the output power. Where here is your 45. So output power will be uh, 0 0.9 by 45. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, actually what they wanted to write is, uh, is the efficiency of the generator because we have already efficiency of the turbine. So, so we don't want someone to come and start subtracting <laughs> efficiency, this one from that, from the overall, and so the remaining is, uh, is that. Actually what, what that question is, is the efficiency of the generator. Yeah, the yeah, if I given if if the variable efficiency is given yeah. to you as 0 0.9, yeah. so I and we have this only. If we have this given to you or calculated this one, you do the same as I said, say n overall for here just here yeah. will be equals to 0.23 by this, I mean, um, let's assume that, let, okay, this is give, let's assume that this is not given, you don't know this one, you put that x by that uh, 0 0.9, or if, sorry, if you are giving overall efficiency at 0 0.9, so 0 0.9 is efficiency of um, turbine by efficiency of gen. Okay, so that, so if I have this already as 0 0.235 now, or 253, then I can calculate this by saying this, divide by that, to get uh, the gen efficiency. I mean, if you are given a question like that, this particular one, it was just, uh, just a mistake, okay, is the gen efficiency that is, that is given. Uh, 0 0.9. But if, if, if there's a question whereby you are given as it is, overall efficiency, and you know the efficiency of this, if you want to get the general efficiency, you just say overall efficiency given to you as 0 0.9 equals the efficiency of the turbine times efficiency of the generator. So that to get this one, you say 0 0.3 by 0 0.253. So that you get that as the general efficiency itself. Okay. Agreed? Okay, so as I said, if I multiply this and that and that, I'll get um, overall efficiency, or I'll just say output here, divided by input there, so they'll give you the same thing, which our output is uh, this 0 .0 0.9 by 45, okay, then 0 power 6, and divide by this uh, MFCV, by 3,600, okay? So you get uh, the same efficiency.
And then at least also in kilograms, uh, I mean, I think kilojoules per second. Yeah, kilojoules per second. So you must know, so yeah, I must multiply by 1,000. Yeah. Because this is, this is in kilo... Yeah. Okay. Even the CV is also in kilograms yeah. per hour. Or yeah, it's a... Kilojoules per hour, sorry. Yeah, that's how we divide by this. But this is K in kilojoule. Yes. Okay. Or kilogram per, per, per hour. See if it's in kilojoule per, per, per hour. That's 0, 0,19. Okay, zero point one nine, and that, oh, okay, all right. Okay, did you get it? Huh? Yeah, also zero point one nine. Okay, so now, now let's look at the next, the next question. Okay, so this other question says, okay, this is a solved one. It says um, the following information applies to a steam boiler. To a steam boiler. Can I clean all right? Um, can, can someone maybe log in and see whether it is okay, it's going? No, I mean another person, you're just seeing it there streaming. Clement can, can yeah. Yeah. Even, on the even on the phone, you can. Let's check. I don't know why. Okay, so let's look at the next question. Right, so now it says uh, the following information applies to steam boiler. Pressure of steam leaving the boiler is 1.4 MPA. And then feed water evaporated during 8 hours. Okay, so let's look at uh, um, pressure. 1. 1.4 MPA. And then uh, feed water evaporated, feed water, which is mass of steam or water, okay? We give it 26.7 tons. And then uh, temperature of the feed water, T1, is um, 50 degrees. And then co-consumption, in eight hours, during eight hours, M of fuel, okay, is M of fuel, 4.26, but this is in eight hours. The mass of water, let me like look for that again, it's in eight hours. Okay, and then um, heat value of coal, CV of coal is 28.9 megajoule, megajoule per kilogram. And then air supplied per coal is 17 kilogram, mass of air, 17 kilo kilogram. And then... Um, Temperature of the flue gas leaving the boiler. Flue gas temperature. Temperature of flue gas. Okay, it's uh, 344. 344. Boiler house temperature. Hmm? Boiler house temperature. Twenty-one degrees. 
Okay, and then um, CV of flue gas. 1.1 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. All right. So now the question is: samples of the steam leaving the boiler were passed through a throttling uh, calorimeter, um, and the average value of the pressure and the temperature after throttling was uh, 101.35 kPa and 121 respectively. Okay, that's it. So when we throttled um, the pressure, 101.35 kPa, and then um, the temperature is 121 degrees. Uh, when, when you throttle, what happens? You compress, it's like you have, you superheat, you know, your steam. You want to see what will be the enthalpy of the steam, all right? So you compress now, so you, you have this. We just want to see, we want to use this to check, um, to check how wet was our steam before compressing it, okay? So we want to see the output of the boiler. Is it, is it wet or dry? That's why we pass uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the steam through a throttling calorimeter. Okay, now the question is to, consider the, to calculate the condition of the steam leaving the boiler. Okay, so we want to know from here, remember that apart from this, if we, if we look at this question, we can use this with uh, this diagram, okay, like that. Now, we want to know what is happening here, HF plus X, HFG. So, we want to see the, the condition of the water. In other words, um, the fraction, the dryness fraction of this um, steam as it was leaving that. But for us to know this, we need to take pass through the, the, the we want to take um, the steam and pass it through this uh, calorific, uh, I mean, throttling calorimeter and use this to get the enthalpy of the steam. Because if we get the enthalpy of the steam, we equate this enthalpy of the steam with this enthalpy of the steam coming out of this place, right? We put them together and be able to get um, XHFG. Did, did you get it? Right? So that's why we are given the two, the two things. So now, so I put uh, just some hints, if you look at there on the board. So what we do is we are going to check from our steam table the enthalpy of, of H, okay, for 101.35 kPa at 125. If we get that enthalpy, then we come to our own system the steam, we check the steam that, comes, that is out of uh, this boiler. Okay, check each HF at that pressure and HFG at that pressure with X. And then equate it with the enthalpy of the steam that passed through the throttling. Remember the same steam, but just pass it through the throttling just to check this enthalpy. Okay, we take that enthalpy, equate with that to get um, the condition of, uh, of our steam. All right, so that's what I'm, what I'm going to do. So let's check from our steam table. Now this is our steam table, and it's not going to get, we're not going to have 101.35, but let's see what we have there in your steam table. Uh, it means we, can, we are going to extrapolate. Do you have 101 at all there, or 100? May I have maybe 100? Okay, so you have 100 only. What is the enthalpy there? Eight, eight. 88. But that is for 100, and you want. Um, 
Okay, eight three zero. Eight three zero major. That's gonna be. That's gonna be something else, eh? Let me see what uh, what we got there. As the enthalpy for for that. Um, It's okay, are using the, 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 are using the, the one that we can get 101. There's a steam table we have 101. But in, in, in the ones that you gave us, it's got for 100 kPa, it's got 418. At uh, kilojoules per kilogram, it's got 418. Mm. So that's almost twice as much. Let's get it here. See the value that we that is used. One oh one. You get two. You say you get two what? Uh, for a hundred uh, kPa, it's four hundred and eighteen kilojoules per kilogram. No, but um, just check what is this is this is. I say what is the excess of throttling? What do we do? What do we excess of throttling? Super heat. Super heat. So did you did you check? On super heat, or you are just checking the normal? This is a normal steam table. Ah, this doesn't have it on here. Can you check super heat on there on your super heat? Uh, um, you got you get anything on hundred hundred? It doesn't know if it's hundred twenty hundred. Okay, yeah. It starts at hundred. Yeah. This one but one oh one times. Okay, yeah. This is it. It doesn't have it at the temperature of hundred. One two one. It only starts at one fifty. Okay, but but this is yeah. At least we have that, we have something. This one is okay. The super heat, let's see. Uh, no, this one is the normal one. Yeah, the super heat. Uh, I know the normal one, but we have super heat on that. You don't have super heat? No. You have super heat, right? Yeah, this one, this one would do that on from our boiler, from our boiler. Okay, but when we throttle, if you want to use H, if you want to use H plus CP, CP delta T, you can use that one, yeah. or you use, um, or you use. Let's yeah, see. So this is a uh, hundred. Look at it. Isn't that one oh one? Yeah, this is what I want. I'm looking for. So this one, but it's at one fifty. So just because of the problem of this um, temperature. Okay, so it's two seven seven seven. No. Yeah, you throttle here. You remember, you just you only throttle that's a sample. Not that you are throttling. Into that, we try a sample to see the condition of when it is superheated. What will be the enthalpy of um, of that steam? Mm. Okay. So let's see. So now, um, what I'm saying that this is. If you check, 
if you check, if it's just that we don't have uh, this thing there, if we check at 101.35, we don't have, we don't have this at 121, okay? All right? If you don't have at 121, what do you think is the steam is? It's a superheated steam, okay, when you throttle. So I'm just saying now, we go to our, our table on superheat, look for 101.35, which we have, and then, but now under the temperature 121, but we don't have that temperature. The nearest temperature, the highest temperature we have there is um, 155. One. Hmm? 150. So, and then the edge that we have there is 2777, two, right? Okay, if we use under table, like this would they use under table, we have 2715. Okay, as a hedge for that. Now, now, this is the enthalpy of the steam. Now, that steam that has that enthalpy, now, we are going to go to our table, we are going to go this, and uh, get the enthalpy of this, which is HF plus XHFG, and you weight it to this enthalpy. All right? So, but here, we are going to use our P here, the pressure there, at this... Uh, yeah, there's a pressure there. There's no temperature there given to you. So let's look for 1.4 MPA. Okay, we'll go to normal steam table, right? Hmm? 195. Is it given to us? Uh, is it given on the table? Yes. Oh, is it for the table or from the equation? From the table. Okay, yeah, it's okay. We, we, we don't want the temperature now, we just want the, the HF. So you go for the HF for that 1.4. What is the HF? Uh, 8.30. Now what is the HFG? One nine five eight. Eight. okay. All right, like that. So we put this to two. Seven seven seven. Hmm? Okay, so I will have X to be two seven 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 minus eight thirty over one nine five eight. So have zero point nine nine four. Okay, wetness. This they got their own wetness zero point nine six. Okay. So zero point nine nine four wetness. Remember, I just um, issue of um, of a, of the <laughs> the table. All right. Now, but sometimes they give you instead of giving you the table, most times they give you the value. All right. You be given HF. You be given HFG. Or even a small table where you can select what you want. So now we have this as a condition of the, of the steam. So the next question is to calculate, uh, is to calculate, um, is to calculate the boiler efficiency. All right. So to get the boiler efficiency, So if we do the condition now of the steam at this point, so it means that we, we have even this, uh, let's say this is our H1 and this is our mm. H2. Right? So we, we know, remember that, uh, let me just put H1 here, okay, because it will have a value. Can put H2 there, can put H3 there. Now, they say we can calculate boiler efficiency. Efficiency of boiler is M um, steam delta H over M this CV. So we, we have that, we have this. Now, we don't know delta H, we have our CV. 
But if we know the edge up to this point, if we know what it is, in, the, in our own case, we know that as we two, seven, 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 right? So we must now know the entropy of the water that is entering the boiler. Look at it. The T1 is 50, right? T1 here is 50. At 3150, I can get this entropy. And I know this entropy here. We know this, which is what we, work, what we calculated, HF plus HF, HFG. Okay. So it means... Um, So we can calculate this entropy here. So I said here, remember that um, H1 we said is 4.2 by 50. Okay, why our H3 in this case is what we have there as 2, 2, I mean 2, 7, 7, 7. So that our letter H will be that. So it means that efficiency of the boiler. In that case, with the mass of the steam and the mass of the steam, remember the mass of the steam is the mass of the water. Okay. The rate at which the steam flows, the same thing as the rate at which the water flows. I will have that to be 26.7 tons in eight hours. Just what you are right, just make sure that this and this are in the same, the same, um, time. The, the same time. Okay. So if it is eight hour, eight hour, no problem. Okay. You can cancel out. So you just write uh, this to be 26.726 uh, Let me just two six seven zero zero. Isn't it? It's uh, tons. It's a, that's a thousand into into um, 277 minus, what is this, 54.2, 210, 210, okay, divide by the MF also is 4.26, okay, 4.26 by CV, which is uh, 2, 8, 0.928, but it's, it's megajoule, so 28900 to give you in kilojoule. Kilojoule per kilogram, that's this, that one. Okay. And also, uh, 4.26 is also in tons, right? Yeah, sorry. Let's so change that as well. Zero. 4260. Okay, so when you do that, you get um, efficiency to be, I just revise that to, we have that, we have 2777 minus 210 times 26700 divided by 42. Six zero divide two eight. So you get about fifty zero point five five six seven fifty five point six seven percent as the boiler efficiency. Okay, you have uh, that as boiler efficiency, and then um, the next question is to calculate. So calculate the equivalent evaporation and at 100 degrees uh, per kilogram coal. Yeah.
So the third one was to calculate EE. -E. Okay, which we said EE -E is also M S at the H over um, MF by two two five five, right? Two 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 five seven. Two two five seven. This So what did I say this um, is a equivalent evaporation, EE? -E. Mm, what does it mean? Mm? Yeah, but compared to 100 degrees, if you operate your boiler, the way we operate our normal our stove, our boiler here, okay. We want to see how much steam it can produce per kilogram of coal. Okay, and that is the best way of comparing two two boilers. All right, so now so we have uh, this our data H as what we have there, um, which is uh, two six seven zero zero into. 2777 seven, seven minus 210. Now divide by um, 4260 times 2257. Okay. Just to stick back, where do we get that 2257? No, that is a, that's a constant for coal value when you want to operate your, um, your boiler. On at 100 degrees. Okay, the value that you give the coal. It's the heat value. 7.128. Okay, 7.12 kilogram. Okay, that that gives you the 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 amount of steam that will be produced per kilogram coal. Remember that this EE is the kilogram coal, all right? Okay, so um, now the next I think that I think that's all. Oh, this is the heat loss. The, uh, the heat loss. The heat loss in the flue gas. Okay, the heat loss in the flue gas. We are giving some t temperature of the heat. I mean, of the flue gas as uh, three four four, and we are given. The temperature of the the, the boiler area, boiler the boiler house, has 25, 21, 21 degrees. degrees. And again, once again, I will give you, I will give you the, the mass of the flue gas, isn't it? So, and uh, what again I will give you? Sieve of, of the flue gas. So if I ask to calculate the heat loss, what is heat? Can I clean here? Heat, heat loss, the flue gas heat is uh, MC delta T, right? So and if we talk about this, remember that um, um, at the chimney, the outside temperature is given as 21, but the flue gas is 344. So the difference in temperature will be that 344 minus 21. That will be this difference in temperature. Okay. Agreed? Now the CP of um, the flue gas is 1.1. So I have this one as 1.1 kilojoule. Um, 1.1, the mass of the flue gas is it given to us. Is it given? Okay. Per kilogram coal. Is it given to us 17, right? S per kilogram coal. All right. So look at it. Remember what I said before? When you have the boiler, so you have your air, you have your coal, right? What is the outcome of the flue gas? 
is the ratio of air and coal, right? So if you have 17 here, and you have one kilogram there, what will be the total mass of flue gas? To be 18. Okay. So we're going to put that here. So 18, right? By that. So you have um, 18 by 1.1. Hmm? 17 kg. Yeah, that's it. But this is mass of air for one kilogram of coal. That is what I, what I put here. The mass, remember that, that this is a boiler, right? The flue gas is, a ratio, is, is in this ratio of 17 is to 1. Okay. So even if you have, when you have a flue gas in the air, it will be in, this, in, the, in the ratio of 17 is to 1. Okay, agreed? So I'm now saying that flue gas, remember we're looking at the, the heat for the flue gas. The flue gas is a mixture of air and coal. So if you have um, one, I mean, air, 17 kilogram, is per one gram of coal. So even the mass will be in that ratio. So if you have a mass to be 17, right? Now the coal will be one gram. So add them together to get total of 18 for the mass of the flue gas. So you just multiply 18 by that. You get about, um, what do you have? We have six, six, Six four three zero, right? Point nine. Okay. Yeah. Check six three nine five. Where are you getting six four? Are you okay? <laughs> so it's six three nine five point four. So kilojoule, right? Six three nine four. Kilojoule. But that's the question, let's see. Okay, it said express as a percentage of heat supplied. Now this this is the this is our heat, our mass, I mean the heat of the flue gas. But if you are going to express it as a percentage of a heat supplied, what is the heat supplied? What is heat supplied? What is heat supplied? What is this heat here? It's a M of flu, uh, I mean of the coal, yeah. um, coal. by CV, right? Yeah. Okay, by CV. So in other words, we just take what we have, 6, 3, 9, 5.4, divide by, divide by all that we have there, 4, 2, 6, 0, by 2, 8, 9, 0, 0. Yeah. Okay, that is really a ratio, but this is a this is the answer for here, but see the cell which must we must get a ratio with respect to mass applied, so we just divide by that. Okay. So is it, is, it, is it there? Okay. All right, so now, so we have, um, so we have that, and then um, what next? That's all about that question, isn't it? So let's look at another question. Okay, I think this, this question, at least it's, everything is given to us, so we don't need to go and start using whether it's a fake uh, table or not. Okay, we have all the values. 
given to us. So here, so the steam generates uh, 5,650 kilogram wet steam per hour. So it's the mass of steam. Um, it says 5,650 kilogram per hour. At uh, 820 kPa. So pressure is 820 kPa with the dryness fraction x 0 0.95 0 0.95 from supply water at 41.6 degrees supply water temperature 1 is 41.6 degrees and then it is it's using 620 kilogram coal. So that means mass of well 620 uh, kg coal with a CV of 32, 32,000 uh, kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, now. And then from steam table, see this, this case we are giving steam table. From steam table, um, HF is given as 75, I mean 725 uh, kilojoule per kilogram. And HFG is given to you as 2042, 2043 kilojoule per kilogram and then um, said one kilogram of water requires 225 kg heat evaporation from and at 100 degrees centigrade one kg of water so requires uh, requires two 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 five seven kilojoule heat. Kilojoule heat to evaporate. Evaporate from and uh, from and at hundred. Okay. Right and then. Calculate thermal efficiency. Calculate thermal efficiency and also um, an equivalent evaporation. Calculate EE. So we want to calculate thermal efficiency and also uh, EE. All right. So thermal efficiency. We have efficiency, M, either MS or heat, little H, over M flu, I mean, of the fuel CV. So we need to do T1 to get H, the condition of the water, getting into the boiler, okay, with this H1 to be. 4.2 by 41.6. Okay, that is the, the enthalpy of the water entering um, the boiler. And then with, um, with a pressure of 8 to 820 kPa, we are going to look for the HF and the HFG. Okay, remember what, that we have that 
Now we are only looking at this point. All right, so we have here already the H1 there. Just to, to nail our condition HF plus H, HFG. All right, so now, so we have everything given to us. It means that our H2, I'm just going to call this here H2. Yeah, that our H2 is uh, the same thing as, <coughs> our H2 is the same thing as HF plus HFG. Yeah, why HF? This is for the table. Let's, let's, let's uh, scrutinize this, uh, uh, this table that we have. Let's just check. Check uh, for 820. If, it's only if it will get, if, we, if it will have 820. 820 KPA. What is the HF for 820? 725. 725, okay. And the HF? HFG? 2043. Okay, so it means uh, that table is, is, is a good one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that <laughs> to, to avoid, pro before we just say, uh, you know, mess up the whole table and say, hey, this table is not, <laughs> it's not friendly. Okay, but this, because uh, maybe in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the year they gave them this question, they didn't give them anything, no table, right? So they were given this values. But if it is not given to you, you must get it, isn't it? Okay, so we have HF as um, 725 plus the, this is, this is the condition, 0 0.95 into HFG as 24.3. Okay. Remember that this is, okay, let me, let's we just catch like this. This is like this from here. We are talking about here. This H2 there. And this H2. And this is the condition. H1. Yeah, the condition for the water entering the boiler at um, 41.6 degrees. Okay, so. Now, we now need to know our data H. We now, you need to know what is from here to here. Because our H2 is everything from here up to this point. And our H1 is uh, this one. So for us to get this, okay, that is where we need to get that data H. Right, so what's the value of this? What do you have? Two six point eight five. Two six eight five. Okay, like that. Right, so that um, our efficiency will now be the mass of the steam. I just to make sure that the mass of the steam and the mass of the fuel they are in the same uh, you know the, the same unit. Mass of fuel. Uh, what is it? Sixty six six thirteen? Okay. Six twenty. So we have a mass of steam, 5650, <coughs> okay, multiply by um, 2665.85 minus, minus uh, the our H1. Okay, 174.2. 174.2. Okay. Then we divide that by 620. 620. Okay. Multiply by the CV, which is uh, 32123. Okay. You get. Um, 70.96, right? Okay. So we got that as um, the efficiency. You see, when we solve, when we solve this, we're going to look at one question that um, 
<laughs> that now we need you to now understand to check whether you understood what the whole of this is. All right. We talk about HF plus X HFG. We talk about from here to here. H1 is this. Okay. Whole of this from here up to this point is your HF. And this one is your HFG. So from here to here is your X HFG. So and then this is uh, your HF. Okay. So that's by the way. Now let's look at. Um, okay. It says it must, we must calculate the EE, right? So EE will do the same thing. We we'll just change this to. Okay, which one? This is in kg per hour, okay? No, the, now, what, what are you going to say? You would have said, why did, why did they put uh, kg per seconds? Or they, they didn't show whether it's per seconds or per hour, right? What are you going to convert? It only means, it only means that, you, that we assume that this is 620 kg per hour. Because it didn't say anything, right? Because now I, I, I wouldn't know whether, <laughs> whether it's in per seconds or in per hour. But since this is already given to us in per hour, I just assume that this is in per hour. Okay. All right, so now, as I said, so to get our EE, so we'll get the same thing. We'll just re replace this with, um, um, with uh, 2, 2. You must memorize that, eh? 2, 2, or 2, 2, 5, 7. That one you must know. Okay, they will not give it to you. Two two five seven. Okay, and then you get about ten kilogram. Okay, um, let's look at uh, this this other equation. Okay, this one. This says a steam So this says a steam generator with um, this is factory 2012, right? And it's a repeat of 2004. A steam generator with a heat transfer efficiency of 30%. So efficiency, 30%. Remember efficiency we said is um, MS delta H over M D C V, right? Okay, so it's uh, 30%. Now, generates uh, 15 tons per hour of dry saturated steam from an at 100 degrees centigrade okay. uh, from an at 100 degrees centigrade m s is 15 tons oh, okay now what can i write there if we say it generates that what is that they said it generates 15 tons per hour of that steam from an at 100. What is that? It's EE. It's EE. Okay. So EE is uh, 15 tons per hour. Right? And we say that EE is MS delta H all over MF with uh, two, two, five, seven, right? Okay. And the CV is 25 megajoule, 25,000 kilojoule, uh, kilojoule per kilogram, right? And then 
This is laid um, in a 100 millimeter deep, 1.2 meter wide, and uh, 2 meter long chain grate. You know the, you know the grate? The chain grate is um, uh, what you put the coal. So this, we move it like that. Okay, so you have the coal. It's being fed from somewhere. So there's something maybe rotating there. And it's moving straight into that. Okay, to feed, to provide for the fire. So this is moving. All right, so now. So the chain grate is uh, 1.2. It's 100 meter deep, at 100 millimeter here, deep, and it's 1.2 meter long, I mean 1.2 meter wide, 1.2 meter wide, and then uh, 2 meter long, so 2 meter long. Now, if the ash contains 2% on burnt coal, Determine the required speed of the chain grate. Okay, the first thing we are going to see, for us to get even the speed of the chain grate, we must not even the mass of, uh, of, the, coal. of the coal. But the mass of, uh, yeah, the mass of the coal. Okay? So, all right, so we know that, we need to, we need to know this. All right? The first thing first is when you look at this, all right. This is going to be E E per kilogram ton. I mean per kilogram fuel. All right. This will be E per kilogram fuel. We see when we the comment um, was made somewhere. One kilogram of if you check one kilogram of water requires two to five heat to evaporate. Um, from and at 100 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to use that concept now. So what we do is I just want to now have, um, uh, is it here? All right, so just make this subject formula and just put it there and look for our MF. Yeah. You take, your, you take the boiler, operate it on at 100 degrees centigrade, check if MF is one kilogram, how much of this will be produced? Okay. So, in other words, I'm going to have, with one kilogram of coal, I'll have MS delta H to be 15 tons by 1 by 2257. Okay. So, that's just what I'm going to put there. So, I'll have efficiency will be 0 0.3 which is 15 by 2257. Uh, this is tons. 15 times 10 to the power 3 by 2257. Now divide by MF by CV 25000. Okay. So from so, there, sorry. you get your MF. So the one is because per kilogram, the fuel is one per kilogram of coal. Per kilogram, for, okay. Yeah, at okay. EE. Yeah. Okay. Or you check, you use, look if you, if you check that statement. They made this, this under question somewhere, okay? But uh, you can use that concept also. Now, one kilogram of water requires about 2257 kilojoule heat to evaporate from and at 100, that statement, okay? Now, so we, so we, we, we do this and get a MF, okay? You get MF to be, remember it must convert to, that is kilojoule per, per seconds, because this, this is in tons per hour, so you must divide, just per hour, you must just divide by 3,600, so that you make it in seconds. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I put it here. I'll say MF is zero point is uh, one five times three power three times two two five seven. Okay. Over zero point three by two five one two three. I, I just say divide by three thousand six hundred. Just to make because this this is in, in tons. It is per hour, so you must divide it by. 3,600. Agreed? It's, it's okay. You must convert this. This is tons per hour. This one is tons per hour. So to put in tons per seconds, because now we, for, for us to get the mass, everything must be in a side unit. And remember, this is mass, this is flow rate. Eh? That mass is not just mass, but it's a mass flow rate. Okay, remember this, this, these things we have here, all these things, they are flow rate. Okay. It's a mass flow rate. Now it's this with time. Okay, so if you do that, you get um, about 1.254. Let me have 15, 1, 2, 3. Times 2, 2, 5, 7. Divide by three, divide two five zero zero zero, divide three six. Okay, by one point two five four. So have one point two five four. Okay, kilojoule per seconds, right? Kilogram per seconds. Okay, now, but um, they said. We must calculate if the arch is this, determine the required speed. The required speed, but allowing for 2% two, two on burnt coal. This is, this is the amount of coal that was burnt, right? If you, if you have 2% on burnt coal, it's like, let's say this is a mass of mass of coal to be M, right? Total mass of coal, burnt and unburnt. This one is the burnt one, the one that was used effectively to generate the heat, right? So if this is um, the mass of coal, now if I subtract minus 2% of that mass of coal, right, I will get the burnt one. Is it true? What is a whole mass of coal? And then, um, so it's a mass of coal, and if we remove 2% of that mass of coal as one burnt, the remaining will be that, the burnt one. This is a burnt one, right? Yeah. So in other words, M into 1 minus 0. 0 0.2 equals 1.254. Okay. So that um, M will now be 1.254 was 0 0.08. Okay. Agreed? This is, this is actually the total mass. Remember, this is a uh, flow rate. Sorry, just. But this is the total mass flow. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Please check it very well. <laughs> what what happened? One minus point zero two. Sure. What what's going on here? <laughs> okay. So one point two five four, one point two five four divided by that. So you get about one point two seven nine five. One point two Seven nine five. Okay, this is the actual mass of coal that is on this grid and it's moving. And this is a kilogram per seconds. Okay. So now 
mass. Remember, remember we said density is uh, mass over volume, right? Density is mass over volume, agreed? That means that mass is density by volume. This is volume. Now, mass flow rate will be density by volume over time. Agreed? Mass flow rate you just divide by time. And then, which is um, volume is area times length over time. Okay? And the length over time, the length at which it moves with time, is this times area by velocity. Okay, so the mass flow rate is now uh, density by area by velocity. And they want us to calculate um, the speed, that's the velocity. So if you're asked to calculate the speed, velocity, that means the speed, okay, in other words, we're saying the velocity, okay, is um, our mass flow rate divided by density times area. Okay. So, and uh, density is given to us already, and area is given. Well, the area I was talking about, this is, this one is the, the one that is moving, the linear motion. So this is, this is already our length over time, the length at which it moves with time. But the area, okay, for the coal, okay, on the bed of the, of the grid, so we have this length times width. And we are given also the density of, um, of that coal. We are given density of coal to be 1350 kilogram per meter cubed. So it means speed will be the mass we have 1.2795 divided by the density 1350 1350 okay, times this area then times width 0 0.1 times uh, 1.2 okay, to be the velocity or the speed at which um, the grid moves okay, as it fits the coal. So which is a, this will give you about 7 point something. So we have 1.2795 divide 1, 3, Five zero divide point one divide one point two okay, seven seven point eight nine eight meter per seconds. Now that is uh, the rate at which the grid is moving as it feeds coal, okay, for burning. This is uh, 2012, eh? it's a repeat of 2004. <laughs> if it's repeated again this year, what will you do? Just throw your pen up, catch it, start writing. Okay. All right, so now, the next thing again we're going to look at, so it's, we'll look at, um, Okay, are we, are, we, are we okay now, right? Can I clean? Okay. Can you explain that uh, mass flow rate formula? Yeah. Okay, remember we said density is mass over volume. Agreed? Mass over volume. So that means that um, mass is density times volume. Mass is density times volume. Mass flow rate is mass divided by time. Isn't it? 
So if I put mass over time, that is this. The more this is a uh, mass over time, isn't it? Okay. So if I have mass over this, mass over time will just be this over time. And this uh, volume is area, this area times the length. And then as this is moving, the length is where we have our linear motion. So length over time will give you the velocity or speed. Okay, so you now equate this by that and calculate the velocity. Okay, so now the next one again is, um, let's look at the other question. Now, June 2013, look at June 2013. So can I clean? Now, June 2013, we are given the following data. The first one is uh, CV of coal is 30 megajoule. It's 30 megajoule. Uh, this is per kilogram. Per kilogram. And then the, the weight of feed water evaporated per kilogram of dry coal. Weight of feed water, M of water, um, is 9.1 kilogram. This is per kilogram of coal. This is just per kilogram of coal. Now, equivalent evaporation from an at 100 degrees centigrade per kilogram dry coal. Okay. The EE is 9.6 kilogram. And this is per kilogram dry coal. Okay. This is per kilogram dry coal. And then um, temperature of the feed water or the feed to the economizer uh, T1 T1 is 12 degrees and then the temperature of the feed to the generator that's a T2 which is to the boiler itself is 105 and then um, temperature of of air so air temperature, which in another question they can say the boiler house temperature. Okay. So air temperature. So air temperature is 13 degrees. Remember the essence of writing this and solving this also, so that when you see the question like this, you know where to start. You know, sometimes if you don't do this often, and you go to the exam, they give you a table like this. You read the first line, second line, you don't even know where to start. <laughs> you just leave it. Next question, <laughs> next page. <laughs> because I have a lot of things sitting there. You don't even know where do I even start. Okay. So now, temperature of flue gas. Temperature of flue gas entering economizer. Flue gas entering economizer. Flue gas. And you see now, entering economy. In other words, now I need to sketch, put that my diagram there, so that it will be easy. Flue gas entering economizer is 369. 
And then um, weight of flue gas per kilogram dry coal. Weight of flue gas, mass of this, mass of flue gas. It's um, 18.2 kilogram, 18.2 kilogram. And then mean specific heat capacity of flue gas, CV for flue gas, is uh, 1.05, 1.05 kilojoule per kilogram. All right, so now the question is to calculate efficiency of the generator alone. That's what I'm saying, like, it's, it's somehow, you need to sketch, let's say, let's say I sketch like this. This is our generator. We talk about the generator, we talk about the evaporator, right? Yes. Because it's a steam generator. Okay. So we have uh, our evaporator here, which something goes in there, something comes out and gets into superheater and then goes out to the turbine right and then you're going to have um, economizer if if pre air, air, heat, air heater if you have that if if it is there okay and then we have uh, our air and uh, our coal. All right, so if we look at that temperature, the T1, um, the, uh, the 12 degrees, is the temperature entering, the temperature of feed into the economizer. Okay, in here, there's a T1, which is 12. And then there's a T2, which is the temperature feed into the generator, which is the output of that. The temperature T2 is 105. Okay, that gets into that. And then um, also we have the, the air temperature, the environment. Okay, air temperature, let, remember that, um, let's say air temperature is 13 degrees. Environment, or the boiler house temperature. Now temperature of the flue gas entering economizer. The flue gas comes here, enter here, and enter here. Enter economizer is um, 369. Remember that, like if I'm here, temperature entering here is 369, but outside is 13 degrees. Okay. And then, temperature of flue gas, okay, is that 369? That is T. 369 degrees and then um, flue gas mass of the flue gas it's about 18.2 um, as the mass of the flue gas that is flowing out is 18.2 kilogram and the uh, CV for the flue gas is one point that okay now the question is to calculate the efficiency of the generator alone Look, the efficiency of this. We, we must know what is happening here. We are even given EE. Look. We are given EE. Remember we said that EE is M, M, M water or M steam, the same thing. Okay, delta H all over, all over um, mass of the fuel by CV. So, what is this data H? Did you get it? We're dealing with the boiler. Yeah. The data H is what is happening here. The enthalpy between this and that. Yeah. Agreed? It should be in a fan. Two, two, seven, five. Oh, okay. Sorry. Two, 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 what? Because I had seven, five. Okay. <laughs> Okay, five seven. This is given. This we know. This we know. This we know. We used to get that data edge. That data edge is the enthalpy change here at the evaporator, right? We have okay. 
Agreed? So this data edge, well, talk about this. So if we if we can calculate the data edge, now here I know the enthalpy in. Right? I know the enthalpy into the evaporator. And I calculate the data edge here. Then I can I can even know what is going on there. Because they say we must calculate the efficiency, the efficiency of the generator only. Yeah. So if I know, if I can calculate data edge, then I can calculate efficiency of the generator. Okay, as M this data edge of a MF two two, I mean C V. Agreed? So we're going to use this to calculate data edge. Or even calculate that. So once I get my data edge, then I'll, I'll put it here and get the, get the efficiency. Okay. So, okay, so now, so we calculate, we have our data edge. If I, if I get from this equation, from this one, data edge will be E E by MF by two two five seven divided by M of the water feed. Okay. Now, so we have that. Remember. Uh, e e with rest um it's even given let me see it's even given there remember they said equivalent evaporation from an art per kilogram of coal right per kilogram of coal okay so i'm going to have my e e to be 9.6 this kilogram of coal by 2257 divided by the mass of the water, 9.1. So,
But what, is it possible to record there and there? Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, there was supposed to be recording there and there. Because it will help me also to edit and yeah. upload on the other section. There's a section of live streaming. There's a section that we can cut off a few things and, you know. This right now, so we have that. As I said, this data edge is here. So let's look at the next question. The efficiency of the economizer. The efficiency of the economizer. Economizer is here. And this temperature is T2, which is 105. And we have T1. Okay, so we can easily get uh, the, the H there. So if we have this and we have that, how do we get H? CP delta T. CP delta T, isn't it? Why not M? I don't know about enthalpy, okay? But if we want to get the energy, it's the MCP delta T, isn't it? Okay. So have CP delta T, since we have this temperature and that temperature, so it means that our H there, all right, will be CP. What's the CP of? Um, four comma one eight seven. Hmm? Four comma one eight seven. So four point one eight seven into one o five minus twelve. Okay. So that will be. Three eighty nine comma three nine one. Three eight nine point three. Nine one. So three eight nine by three nine one. That is the enthalpy of the economizer. But the question is to calculate the efficiency of that economizer alone. Okay. So 
So efficiency of economizer is M theta H, but this is theta H for the econo, right? Divide by MF CV. So this is just for the economizer alone. So it will be M, M of the water or the steam by the enthalpy which we have calculated, the enthalpy of the economizer, and divide by MFCV. Okay. So we have that. Um, Uh, that to be half the M of that water is 9.1 by what's what we calculated here. Theta H389.391 divided by the M of the MF. What is it given? Is it given to us? Is given the what, what is the M M of the of the fuel. Uh, um, That's the M of the flue gas. Or is it a? They give you the, the mass of the flue gas, oh. and they give you the the, the temperature um, of the.
to get the, the total efficiency. How do we get it? How do we get the efficiency of the evaporator? So we get m d theta h over d square. I think we did it somewhere. Did we do, did we get something like that? Did you calculate evaporator efficiency? We did that earlier. Did you calculate it anywhere? Efficiency of the evaporator. Yeah. We that was the first question. We didn't calculate it there. Okay, yeah, efficiency of the generator alone. So what did we get as the efficiency of the gen alone? Uh, 60.41. 60.41. And then the efficiency of um, that economizer, we got 52.08. Multiply it. Let's see what that gives us. What do you have? 51.4. It's one point something. It's not giving us. Okay. It's not right. Okay, but it's fine. But remember, we were saying for this, we just write our normal efficiency because we're talking about the whole efficiency now. Efficiency of the entire system. So it's going to be efficiency will be, you said, M of the steam or the water by delta H, which we have calculated already, divided by CV. I mean, MF, CV. Okay. We have this. We have all the values. Mm. So we have all the values. So MH, I mean, that the H we calculated, you got it somewhere two, two, three, as 2381.01. And then we have uh, this. And then we have that. And we have one. CV. Mm? Okay, one. The MF is per kilogram, right? Yeah. I did it per kilogram coal. So we have MS, what's the steam? 9.1 by 2381.01 divided by 1 times 30,000. Yeah, Okay, like that. So now, um, let's, let's get our steam table. So it says, the thermal efficiency of a plant is 80%. Superheated steam generated the hour. So let's... let's What is thermal efficiency? What is the formula? Like that, right? So they said that this is 80%. Okay. Now, and the superheated steam generated per hour is uh, 12, 12760. Uh, mass of steam one two seven six zero kilogram. This is per hour. Now, 
the fuel consumption per hour is a one four five zero one four five zero kilogram. This is per hour. And then um, the pressure of the superheated steam is three MPA. Pressure is superheat. Three MPA. And then the temperature of the superheat are steam generated with a temperature of 250. CV of the fuel, CV 29.7, 29.7 megajoule per kilogram. And then um, temperature of the feed water entering the evaporator, T1, 99.6. And then um, F fuel ratio F fuel ratio nineteen is to one and temperature of the flue gas at the chimney temperature at chimney is um, 260. Then percentage of energy absorbed by evaporator. It's um, 67.98%. And specific capacity of flue gas, CV for flue gas. Okay, it's 1.1 kilogram per, I mean kilojoule per kilogram. So as I said, so the, the more we solve this, the better we understand. Now, if you have a question like this and I yeah, give you everything you read from the first to the end. The first question is to calculate something. Sometimes you look at it and then you just dump it. Check the next question. Okay. Can you make the announcement also about the online streaming that is going on? I mean on the group. Okay, so now let's start. The first question is to calculate the specific enthalpy of feed water at economizer inlet and find its temperature from the steam table. What is that um, inlet? This is the inlet temperature. We well, must calculate the enthalpy. Remember, we have this. This uh, temperature T1 is 99.6. They say you must calculate, look for this, for the steam table. Okay, so look for it. Get your steam table. You are not going to calculate, you just need to get it for the steam table. So Rendani, you should know that you are the you are the only one connected. So you must tell us the um, the performance of uh, this live streaming. Okay, I'm talking to the, the person <laughs> that's on live streaming. Okay, so that if it's okay, then you don't need to come here. No, you don't need to check. Where do we need to check? 
Remember we said temperature? Remember, they, they feed water into the economizer. It's not, it's not even yet heated, in fact. Okay. Everybody check. You know what to, what to see that? Yeah. Look for 99.6 temperature on the steam table. You get 99.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.
That's that your old stuff also? I don't have that one. Why? Uh, okay. Now, is there any other way you think we can do? We can use to do it. Hmm? So now we are going to remember that we are only here is M C. But but I will give in. We, we know C P already, isn't it? We know that. Okay. So. Um, I just what I'm going to do now is if I take from here to here as that, can I equate it? If I could get it as H superheated HP at uh, H at uh, three, three, can I see? Just see what. So HG, so let, let's take it as HG plus MCP. Okay. You know what? Just, just put this, just give me the value of the HG there. The value of the HG for that, for that 3 MPA. The, the HG. Is it? 2802, right? Like that. Okay. So that gives me the from here to here. Okay, let's let's equate that. So the whole of this is our head G, right? And this head G, okay, is 1008 plus X HFG. Okay, so it's fine. Let's get a condition of the of the of that. Do we have C P? Hmm? Yeah, you said? No, it's asking. Is it going to be one equation of one? Let's try. Let's check. Check it. No, you can't give, you can't give one. 2802 minus 1008 equals that divided by 1, 7. Hmm? One seven nine four. <laughs> one. Just like what I want is that. What I want is that the entropy of the steam when it is out. Hmm? Mm, I have to get if I had the superheated, I'll well, just get the, that entropy of the superheated, then I'll equate <laughs> with that. Okay, but another way. Well, let's use this. Let's let's use this. But now, okay, it's fine. This HP plus MC theta, right? What is it? This, this will give us that, isn't it? HG, sorry. Yeah, HG. It will give us that. It will give us the same thing with the superheated uh, value. Okay. So we'll have this will be 2. Two. two. Yeah? Yeah, SG plus this one. I want to get. Plus that will get the total entropy of the steam. Okay. Yeah. So 2802 plus um, which which mass are we going to use? One kilogram, right? Yes. Yeah. One by the delta T, which we have this here, and we have that, isn't it? Right? The saturation temperature is about 233.8. That we got here, two, three, three point eight. As you got from the steam table, and when it is heated, you got something as two fifty. So I have two fifty minus two, three, three point eight. Hmm? It's okay, right? All right. So let's um, let's let's get um, let's calculate. Let's see what that thing is. 250. So 250 minus 233.8 equals that plus 2. 
Minus one. Is it is it correct? Two eight one eight comma two. Hmm? Is it correct? Yo. If it's not correct, there must be something. There was something wrong somewhere. Huh? Uh, M with one. But I'm just saying what is that? Is it Yeah. Now, even if you put the MCP, hey, <laughs> sis. Oh, 4.187. All right, but now the answer will not give us. <coughs> <laughs> because now it will give us a very high value. Eh? Check you are going to get something more than, more than dry. Eh? Yeah, not, not something more than dry. Check. 4.18. Okay, yeah. Hmm? For X. Oh, for X. Oh, oh. When you when you do that, then those the two fifty. Two fifty minus two. You get ninety seven point six. Hmm. You get ninety seven point six. For X. For X. I get one point. So you get one point or something. One point. Yeah. Let me just multiply out this. Yeah. You get you get one point something, but somebody must tell me. This approach is okay, but now tell me what what we are missing. There's something that we are missing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No, they, no, yeah. If I want, I want to know the condition of the steam here, so I, I just want to cut off this just here, and equate. So if I if I do this this plus that like what we have here is all the way from here to the to zero. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yes, it's mathematically correct. So now if I have all the way to zero, that I need to remove something to remove some of these things here. And that's why I said, if I have two eight zero this, then I will remove this this guy here. Look, I think I think look look at it. What we do is we have this we have this plus it. But I said the whole of this we have here is from here to here. But I don't want I don't want that. I want to remove this. I even want to remove this. I want to know what is happening here. Okay, so the best thing would have been to write like this. Plus x into one seven nine four is two eight zero two. I need to because now if I have this, it's a hedge, and hedge is from here to this to zero. So I must remove. I must move this hedge out. Check it. Let's see whether it will give us something. Let me check. Let's let's see. Is two eight zero two minus four one eight. We got that at four and eight, isn't it? If it was that, then um, uh, let's say minus one zero zero eight equals that. Divide by one seven nine four. Get yeah, about zero point seven zero point seven six seven. Okay. Look at look at what I'm saying. This Hg at this pressure at this three MPa. Remember that Hg. If I scale that again, we have like that. The first part here. Now Hg here. 
Okay, is the whole of this from here to the end, right? But now we have we have the enthalpy at this. Okay, we even have the enthalpy at this point. Okay, sorry, we even have we have this also. So we have this. We have this as two three three point eight. Even this uh, because I use the economizer only, which is uh, HF at uh, 99.6 and we got this to be 418 sorry sorry let's let's just use this look here we can look for the edge at this point the whole of this down i need to remove everything from the hedge so that i know what is happening here is, does it make sense Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So we have, I think, I think that's, that, that's okay. Look, because this is uh, X plus HFG and this is HF. So this is, this is, the whole of this is okay as what we did. So I've removed this, to remove this from the whole of this. Okay, my HG is given to me as 2802, right? Now, I now said HF plus H, XHFG is from here to there. So now what I'm going to do now is this one, which is from here to here, minus 2802 minus just this small part before the water, sorry, just this small part before the water enters into that. This is our HF plus HFG. So I'm, I'm removing this. And this is 418. So I'll remove that minus 418, okay? And equate to this. Because from here to here, it's HF plus XHFG. Okay? Hmm? 418 is the enthalpy before the water entered into the evaporator. Okay? It's what, what we got here. I want to remove this, the whole of this. There's nothing here. This is our, where we have our HF. Before it starts going. Okay. And then saturate. Okay, but um, do you look at it. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, uh, the next thing again is the energy. The energy absorbed by the economizer in kilogram and the temperature of the fuel leaving the, t the superheater. So let's, so it means, let's, let me sketch that. So we have this, we'll have that. Now, what is the temperature of, um, of the gas leaving the superheater? I mean, okay. Hmm? It's 260. What do you get to see? The temperature of the fuel, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, of the fuel gas leaving the superheated is given to you already, right? 260. And then the energy absorbed by the economizer. So how do you get it? Energy absorbed by the economizer. You must know the temperature in into the economizer and temperature out of the economizer. So temperature into the economizer is 99.6. Temperature out of the economizer is what? We have gotten it from the table. 233.8. Two, three, three yes. Did you get it? Look, we have, we have, we put already 9.6 this temperature and this one, so the temperature we got is 233.8. Three, three Remember, we are using the steam table to solve, right? Agreed? So now, if you are asked to calculate the energy absorbed by the economizer, so what will it be? MC delta T. Right? Agreed? So, um, the mass of uh, the water is, let me just put it here. So, energy absorbed, absorbed by 
a cone, right? So we said this M, C data T. As I said, we have our data T already. This is the entrance, the water that's getting into the chromizer, and this is where it gets out of it, right? The temperature. We got, we got this for the, te the table. So we have, what's the mass of uh, that? It's one, two, seven, six, zero times uh, 4.2 into delta T, which is uh, 233.8 three, three minus 99.6. Okay. That is the energy absorbed by the economizer. Then energy absorbed by the superheater in kilojoule per kilogram fuel, the temperature of the fuel gas leaving the evaporator, and the efficiency of the superheater. The first one is energy absorbed by the superheater. So the superheater will still look at the, our diagram there. Energy absorbed by the superheater. Energy absorbed by the superheater. MCP delta T. So energy absorbed by the superheater. Energy absorbed by superheater. Okay. So MCP delta T. Right. So which we have uh, temperatures. Um, uh, we have we have a temperature of two fifty. Okay. And then we have inlet temperature is two three three point eight. So we have one two seven six zero by 4.2 into 250 minus um, 2, 3, 3.8, right? Because that's it. the same temperature is what is here, 2 to 3.8, temperature there. Now, our superheated, we have temperature 250. Okay, so MC theta T for here, will be 12760 by 4.2, into 250 minus 233.8. Okay, agreed? Right? So that's the energy absorbed by the superheater. And then temperature of the flue gas leaving the evaporator. Temperature of the flue gas leaving the evaporator. Temperature of the flue gas leaving the evaporator. So look at all the temperatures given to us. Um, we are given. Oh, sorry, that one is is given already. Just just put it there. Um, temperature of flue gas. Temperature of the flue gas. Leaving the evaporator. So after evaporator. You have your superheater. After superheater, you have your economizer. And uh, we are given the temperature. The temperature of temperature of flue gas at the chimney base, 260, somewhere here. 260 but they want the temperature of the flue gas leaving the evaporator so I want the temperature here temperature there leaving the evaporator and uh, heat gets in there if I want to know that that temperature look 
I must know the enthalpy of this. If I know the enthalpy of this, I equate it with mc delta t. Remember, what is hitting this? What is hitting this is a coal, right? So if I know the enthalpy here, if I know that enthalpy there for the evaporator, you equate it with mc delta t. Do you get what I'm saying? Because it's this that is given the heat to that. So let me just see where I can clean. Um, let me just, I don't know. Let's clean here. What I'm saying now, we, did we calculate delta, delta H of evaporator? Did we calculate the enthalpy of the evaporator? No. We didn't, but we can calculate it. This is this. So this, this is in and out, now it evaporates, right? So if I have HF plus X HFG, uh, then I get the enthalpy. Yes. Okay. The energy you use before you boil it and the latent uh, energy. So if I can get that enthalpy here, so enthalpy on the evaporator, it's coming from the heat. Okay. Let me just see ACP into um, temperature. Uh, which temperature am I going to use now? The temperature here. Because I want to get the, this temperature. I will give it outside. No. I'm not giving outside boiler temperature. No. We are giving the chimney base temperature as 260. Which other temperature is given to us there? There's no other temperature given to us. We are only giving what is happening on top there, and it cannot be the same temperature here or there. Okay. Okay, so except if, yeah. So what is it? Energy absorbed by this is the temperature of that. No, what is it? What is? Okay, yeah. Percentage energy absorbed by evaporator. Sorry. Yeah, good. Percentage energy absorbed. Okay. Energy absorbed. Um, it's uh, 67.98. But still, percentage energy absorbed is 67.98 percent. See, do you think it will, can it, can it be used in this case? So if I get... Hmm? That's the features of the evaporator. So energy absorbed because we have that as MS delta H all over all over MFCV. So this is about sixty sixty seven point nine eight. Uh, 0 0.67.98. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I want to see how I can equate it with what, um, with the heat from, from the flue gas. Yes, and that, I just want to get under temperature. Let's look at under temperature of either sur surrounding, thermal efficiency, superheated generated per hour temperature of the superheated, um, okay, I think if I don't get this one, then um, what is absorbed by the superheater? So the temperature of the flue gas leaving the evaporator. I know the temperature here, we know that one. Two sixty is the temperature. 
260 is the temperature of the flue gas at chimney base. And I can't, if, I, if I'm to use it as 260, but I know that we still use this one here. Because if I'm to use it here, then it will be, e it will be easy, but um, the temperature here can, and there cannot be the same. Okay, since I'm going to leave this one. How many marks is that? Four marks. Let me leave this four marks. <laughs> Next page. <laughs> All right, so I will leave that one. Okay? Maybe we can look at it later. Okay, now, okay, the, last, the last thing, uh, this is a question from Mines. November 2010, repeated in factories. So it's a, it's a Mines question 2010, and uh, it's repeated in factories 2012. <coughs> okay, it's given. So we'll just go through that. So I'll leave this question. You can look at it and see if you can get it. All right, now, a boiler generates 565 kilograms of waste steam per hour at 820 kPa. The drainage fraction of 0.95 from the supply water at uh, 41.6 while using 620 kilogram coal with CV of 32 megajoule. So you are, you are asked to calculate the thermal efficiency and the EE. Okay, that we can do, right? Yeah, we did it. Self, uh, so it's a repeated question now. The last one. Now, this is during a trial of a three-phase, this is mines 2014, okay? A trial of a three-phase electrode boiler, the following information was given. Boiler supply voltage is 500 volts. Average current drawn is 550 amps. Power factor is 0 0.9. Hot well temperature is 86. And then the pressure is 600 kPa, dryness pressure is six of the frac fraction of the steam is 0 0.9. Okay. And then the next again is a double acting pump. The pump um, uh, stroke is 87.5 millimeter. Diameter of the plunger is 47 millimeter. Diameter of the plunger rod is 21.0 millimeter. Speed of the motor is 25. And then gearbox reduction is 24 is to 1. Volume of volumetric efficiency is 82%. And then overall drive efficiency is 85%. The question is if 25% of the boiler feed water is bypassed through the level control valve, Calculate the efficiency of the boiler. All right, so the first thing is, remember that our efficiency is um, M steam, delta H over M uh, fuel CV. All right, our boiler efficiency. Now, here is no more, we are no more using coal here. Okay, it's now electric boiler, right? So we can now substitute that with a uh, root 3 IV constituent. Okay, so which was given, we are given the voltage, we are given the, the current, okay? So we substitute this with root 3 IV constituent. Okay, and again, um, what is given to us also is, okay, we are given the drainage fraction, we are given the pressure. So we are going to look for this data edge. Right, we're gonna look for data edge. So to get data edge, uh, we're not given mass also, right? We're not given the mass. If you check very well, we don't have the mass. All right, so we're going to use now as I put that diagram there, we're gonna use that to calculate the mass. It's a double acting pump. 
So, as the pump moves, so we have that. So, um, so we have this uh, plunger. All right. So we have this one is inlet and that is outlet. So as you move like this, water comes in, you move forward, water goes out. But as you move forward here, water goes in. As you move forward, water comes in, you move backward, this one goes out. So by the time you sum up these two, so it's, it's doubled. Okay. So it's um, the plunger now. If you want to see total, to get the total amount of water um, being um, and it's being pumped, you add both of them, this and that. So now, so we have that concept. We're going to have, uh, we're going to calculate first of all the mass of the steam, okay, from that double acting pump. And to get mass, we must know the volume, volume of our fluid that is moved. Look, if, remember, this is, this is, uh, it's like this, okay. So we have the area at which this moves, and we'll have the stroke length. The stroke length is this, the distance at which this is moving. So if I want to get the volume, I'm going to get that area. Okay, area, volume is area times length. I know that mass, I mean, I know that density is mass over volume. So to get my mass, um, I'll get this by volume. So I need to know the volume first. Okay. So now we have um, a volume. So the volume will be area times the length, and the length is the length of this stroke, right? If, if it was only one stroke, in other words, if this is not there, and I know this area only, so I will just take that area times length, okay? So to get the volume of water being pumped out of this. But now, we still have this side also. And this side, if I want to get the volume of water that is pumped, I need to get the volume of this area, this place. All right, so that's why we're going to have area. This is uh, pi d squared over four. Now, this is our area. If I multiply by the length, that will give me the total volume. If I move this backward, the volume will be area times this length. Okay. But now, when you move it, it pushes that volume out. But still, when you, when you move backward, it pushes another volume out. But that volume out is it's only a volume of this minus this, uh, that rod. It was a serious thing, eh? Okay, yo, so let's finish up this so that we'll, we'll go for break. The time is 12 o'clock. What time is it now? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, just get, you get what I'm, say, what I'm saying here? 
So as you move this backward, if you move forward the whole of this volume out, backward, this volume but is just except this, isn't it? That will be out. So that means total volume is going to be something like um, just here, which is pi. If I put this one as uh, capital D, I'll have pi capital D squared minus small d, okay? over 4 something like that okay All right so let's let's just let's just look at it there so that we can finalize this so that's that is why we have that the first one volume of the fluid moved in rev uh, uh, per revolution by d squared by the stroke length by the length which is this distance over 4 now plus when you move backward it pushes this one out but this uh, except this area okay there's nothing here as a plunger all right that's why i have a capital d squared minus uh, small d squared all right multiplied by the stroke length for four so that will give you total volume of fluid that is moved so once you get a volume of fluid moved now the next again because what we want to do is to calculate the mass if we get our mass then we'll come back to the equation so the theoretical volume of, of water passing through the feed, the feed pump per seconds okay, will be our volume moved per revolution multiplied by rev per seconds by the gear ratio. There's a reduction, a gear, uh, radio, uh, red, I mean, uh, gear reduction of 24 is to 1. So even if the steel is moving very fast, we, have, we use... Uh, the, the, the what we call it now um, the gearbox okay to reduce our speed okay 24 is to 1 so now I'm going to reduce our speed to 0 0.002998 otherwise divide by 24 and then you have about 0 0.002 and then that and then given the volumetric efficiency of 87 okay we can multiply that 0 0.87 as efficiency with that 0 0.09, 0 0.009282. Okay, from there you get um, that to be as a volume flow rate to be 0 0.0024. Okay, you get our uh, volume flow rate to be 0 0.0024, and then we know already that uh, mass is this time volume. So we can also get our mass flow rate. Right, so now, however, they say 25% of that feed water is bypassed. So we need to uh, bypass or remove 25% of it. If we remove 25% from 0 0.0024, you have about 75%. So 75% times that will give you uh, 0 0.0018 okay. uh, liter per seconds or meter cube per seconds. And to get our entropies, so that's, that is our volume. Um, to get our entropies from the steam table, we look at what is given to us from the steam table for a pressure of 600, 600 right, kPa. So you look, we, look for, we look for that um, HF at 85 degrees, we get 356. Okay. HFG that, so total H will be HF plus HFG to get 2546. All right, then we substitute in that equation. Yo, what a long day! <laughs> All right, so this, this is the end of, um, of boilers. You can now solve, you can try, okay, and look for any other past equation and uh, try your best to solve them okay so we'll have a break any question confusion confession no questions when did they get 85 85 it's not given we're going to use pressure we're going to use temperature to find um 
it's, it's not given? It should be 86 degrees. 86, the hot yeah. well temperature? It should be 86, 86. It's 86 degrees. Yeah. It should be 86 degrees. Ah, it's 86 degrees. It should be 86 degrees. Because it's given to you as 86 degrees. Yeah, it's 86 degrees, not 85. And then the HF for that is 360. Oh. All right, so you look at it. This is uh, one of the mines uh, questions. They can take question for the mines and put it there, you know, for you to, to have a look. Okay, so let's have a break, please. Um, there's no time. So what you do, you can try other questions, some boilers, you know, just to have a holistic idea, and then uh, you can solve as much questions as you can.